All right, so I haven't read this. I saw some I saw some like posts about this and I haven't read it, so I have no idea what this is about, but I saw I think I saw a Theo video where it had like you know, like zero, zero, and then 104,000. So let's, what happened here? What the hell happened here? Netlify just sent me a $104,000 bill for my simple static site. Dude, honestly, if I had a $104,000 bill, I would shit my pants so hard. I guess my first question I'd have to ask is, is there not some sort of like money limit you can put on here? Like, I'm not gonna lie to you, this, this terrifies me. This is like the biggest terror of my life is not having the proper things in place and waking up the next day realizing you just bankrupted yourself. Like, by accident. So, I received an email from Netlify last week saying that I have a $104,500 bill uh, overdue. At first, thought I, uh, let's see, at first, I thought this was or is a joke. Oh, my goodness. Flip. Take that part out. I'm having a stroke. Flip. Flip. Call the ambulance and then zoom in and then zoom back out and take this part out. Okay. Huh. At first... I thought this is a joke or some scam email, but after checking my dashboard, it seems like I am truly owing them $104,000. That's 190 terabytes bandwidth in four days. The web was a mistake. The web was a mistake. That is so much data. I really hope that at the end of this, it's because like, dude, the, 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 the greatest oopsie daisy of all time. Whoopsies. I clicked. I clicked. Thank you. Reddit. I'm happy that when I click an image, it opens up a new tab. That's, I mean, that's honestly, that's what I want. That's the experience I want is a new tab when I click the button. I really hope that this is because, like, I actually read one of his articles, and then it, then everybody clicked on his page, and he forgot to put static caching, and then it exploded. That'd be funny. So I was like, ah! And then think, okay, maybe I got DDoS attack since Netlify charges $55 per 100 gigabytes for the exceeding bandwidth. The peak day, February 16th, has... This many bandwidth charges. That's a lot. That I mean, this is a lot of bandwidth. This is a lot of bandwidth in one day. I mean, it's not impossible, but why attack a simple static site like mine? This site has been on Netlify for four years and is always okay with free tier. The monthly bandwidth never exceeded even 10 gigabytes and has only 200 daily visitors. Damn. Damn. Uh, the obvious problem should have used should have used HTMX. I'm just gonna say that right off the rip. I think the problem is is they didn't use HTMX. Oh, ne uh, Netlify CEO response to this. Okay, well I'm gonna look at that here in a let's 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 not let's not shatter anybody's you know view of this. I contacted their billing support and they responded uh, they responded to me that they looked into it and the bandwidth came from user agents meaning it is a DDoS attack. Then they say such cases happen and they usually charge their customers twenty percent on this <laughs> oh, 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 oh that's still twenty thousand dollars oh my goodness oh my goodness since uh and since my amount is too large they offered to discount to five percent okay i mean that's that's still crazy for this person to get a five thousand dollar bill but Okay, I mean, that's better than, I mean, it's better than 20%. This feels more like a scam to me. Why do serverless platforms like Netlify and Vercel not have DDoS protection or at least a spend limit? Well, I mean, the spend limit seems natural. Are you sure? Isn't there a spend limit? Is there not a spend a spend limit on uh, on these platforms? I would assume there would be a spend limit. Nah, and it sucks. Really? There's not, Vercel, yes. Yeah, see, I thought there was one. I Minimally, I thought there was one on Vercel. So there is one on Vercel, is what I'm hearing, not on by default. Well, that makes sense. You wouldn't want it on by default. Spend limits is definitely something you'd want to opt into, for sure. Vercel just introduced it, I think. Okay, so they just introduced it. Okay, okay, okay. They should have alerted me if the spending skyrocketed. I agree. You should also have alerts set up yourself, right? But I guess, I mean, would you would you really ever? You have a blog post that's getting like 200 visitors a day. You're not really thinking, I mean, why would someone DDoS you, right? Like these are just things you wouldn't think of doing. Honestly, if I, if I wrote a blog post, if you are just some random person and you write a blog, would you ever think, ah, oh, yeah, I'm going to get DDoSed because of my important opinions. Maybe he posted about Tailwind, got some people real, you know, real, their feathers. You never know. Not in a million. Yeah, most people would just never assume they get anything. I'm, in fact, I'm even shocked getting 200 daily visitors. Like, let's go. That's great. Good job. Good job. Now, now you should think about it. This feels more like a scam to me. Why do serverless platforms like Netlify and Vercel not have DDoS protection or at least a spend limit? They should have alerted me if the spending skyrocketed. I checked my inbox and spam folders and found nothing. The only email is extra usage packet purchased for bandwidth. It feels like they deliberately not support these features so they can cash grab in situations like this. 
It's a bold, it's a bold claim. Uh, DDoS attack was focused on a file on my site. Yes, it's partially my fault to put a 3.44 megabyte size sound file on my site rather than using a third-party platform like SoundCloud. But still, this doesn't invalidate the point of having protection against sound attacks or such attacks and limiting the spend. Skill issue? Are we reading skill issues right here? Is that what we're having right now? It's a sound attack? I've never heard of a sound attack. This is the most sound attack I've ever heard of. Uh, I haven't paid that 5K yet, and I decided to post here to hear what others think first. Uh, and yes, I have migrated my site to Cloudflare. Uh, learned my lesson and will never use Netlify or Vercel again. Wow. Okay, okay. I mean, that it is one nice part about having a non... I mean, so this would be one tick. I mean, even though I'm sure this someone sent me the, the CEO responding, I'm sure everything, you know, ends up pretty nice here and that he gets all the things up for free. But real talk, like this is one of the many dangers of having an auto-scaled platform is that you this can happen if you haven't set in the right safeguards, right? It's just part of it. Like if you had your, if you just had a singular machine, you know what I mean? Like, again, I, I'm surprised they even have a, uh, they even have serverless to begin with, with 200 visitors. You know, like, can you even really, like a Linode free tier machine, you could have hosted all of this and 10 extra traffic and been just fine. You could have 100 extra traffic and never would have had a single problem, right? I'm always kind of, I'm always kind of confused by some of these where, where like, you, you, you it's, you know, that, that uh, scene in uh, the One Piece where Mihawk pulls out the little, the little sword and says he doesn't hunt, you know, rabbit with cannon. That's kind of how I feel sometimes is that you get these like you get you get these like moments where someone just just brings out the cannon to go hunt a rabbit. I don't know. I guess if you're learning if you want to use serverless and learn about it then yeah, maybe that's Prime cannot get more more late. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. One piece mentioned everybody loves me. You know what I mean? The, these people who can't uh, be arsed to do five dollars to do droplets, a wine over the massive scalable server. I mean, it's it's just the da- it's 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 just a natural danger of having something that can auto scale for you, whether you like it or not. I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm just saying it's. I mean, it's in fact it's a reason you should use serverless if you don't know how to scale your stuff. You don't want to pay for the, someone to learn how to scale. You don't want to go through all that process of scaling all your stuff. You want to be able to be in multiple regions. You want all the good stuff that they offer. You just don't want to have to do it yourself. There. Therefore, this seems like a very valid choice to make, but at the end of the day, it also comes at a potential cost, which it sounds like a lot of times they do try to resolve these things amicably. I mean, even a 5% charge is still – it's a lot of money, but I mean that's that's nice of them to do that. You know what I mean? But why scale a static website? Exactly. Why do any of this? If it's purely a static website, why are you not just on a CDN? Why is Akamai not your hosting platform <laughs> or whatever? Just like, what the heck happened there? All right, anyways, update. Uh, thank you for all the suggestions I have posted on Hacker News. Here's the email response from their billing uh, support. All right, this is very strange. Thank you for uh, reaching out so that we can investigate the problem. After looking into this, it seems like you've got, let's see, you have a hit song on your site. Uh, or Man Bu San Zhang Lu by Teresa Tang. I was not aware of her, but she seems to be popular and Taiwanese singer. Okay. This song is 99% of your band. (laughs) Oh my gosh, this email is so good. Oh my goodness. Imagine getting hit with this. Damn, you got hit with a a hit song. You got hit with a hit song. Oh man. After looking into this further, it seems like a lot of the bandwidth users. Yeah, okay. This This is just so funny. It is just so dang funny that that's what it is. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Normally, we uh, discount these kind of attacks. I mean, this is like definitely like your fault kind of problem here. You should not have done this. You should not have put on a popular Taiwanese song just to get owned. I mean, it feels bad, though. feels bad. Update. For those who are curious about the MP3 file, it's just an old Cantonese song. I have removed it from the site, but you can still view it from GitHub history. Okay. Update. I saw the CEO's reply on Hacker News, and their support also reached out to me to waive the bill. But I'm still curious who orchestrated the attack, and they said they are still researching the incident. Update. Their support hasn't come back to me with the IP information I've asked yet. So I posted on Twitter, and their CEO, let's see. Oh, wow. Okay. So we have more information. Hold on. Let's look at this one. There we go. On the front-end platform, Vercel, Netlify, Cloudflare pages, who is ultimately responsible for a malicious DDoS attack? This and this. I voted the the customer. Because it's kind of interesting, because, like, 
it's kind of interesting. How you know, it's an interesting question. Oh, when a spike in traffic can be automatically and absolutely classified as malicious, our platform is set up to block this. If it's a new pattern, we'll see. We'll add it to the automated rules and waive the charges. It's tricky when a tra- when the traffic is in question. Oh my goodness, in question is clearly or is not clearly malicious. I mean, that's the problem. That's why I'm saying, how do you? Wrong, but okay, okay, but you're saying the platform is, but like it's this. You have to rely on them being correct. You know, you should also have some safeguards set up in your in your stuff. Like if you're building a website, you should have some. I mean, obviously, this guy's building a blog. I mean, the problem is, is that we have two different use cases, right? A spending limit would be, yeah, this would be ideal. Is that you have a spending limit, a spending limit with some sort of alert, right? I mean, I think the platform should add in some level of things that make it easy, right? If there's like an obvious bot farm that they already have IP tracked that goes around doing whatever to people, then yeah. That that would make that makes sense. That's the whole uh, intention of managed infra. I would agree. Okay, I can I can be sold on that idea that it, since you you are literally selling managed infra infrastructure, you should have more safeguards put into this. Fair. The whole point uh, in platforms like for sales to abstract this stuff away. Yeah, that's okay. That's a fair. That's a fair critique. The hard part is they obviously can't get a hundred percent. They cannot, I mean, it's impossible to get 100%. Uh, in this case, uh, and any automatic block could mean ruining a launch, making a viral campaign go bad, or disappointing fans on a, let's see, of an emerging artist. Yeah, see, that's, that, that's, I mean, that's immediately my first thoughts was, what happened if you just had a successful thing, and now you get blocked? For free users, my philosophy has always been that we can never go back and fix it, it if we've ruined a moment of glory, but we can always cancel an invoice or refund a charge. Our support team does their best to identify these situations in advance of a user ever being made aware. In the specific case of the user posted about the large bill they received, we've been clear that while this was an incredibly rare situation, we should have done better. A bill this large uh, should never have left our system automatically, and our support team should not have treated this as a business user. Okay, fair, fair. We also should not have speculated that, or we should also, we also should not have speculated that this was a DDoS attack, since in first case, the traffic does not match organic traffic from a region with lots of old devices. Uh, While we do currently have notifications in place that make a user aware that extra bandwidth is being consumed we do not currently have the ability for users to present limits why not i mean i feel like that would be i mean i can i I truly do understand the problem with limits right like here you go you disappointed me well the problem is is that i mean at some point it has to be the user as well the problem like here's my counter argument chat this how do you know you're not being ddosed like, really, how do you know you're not being DDoSed as one of these platforms? Like, you can't just always do that. If you rely on them fully to do it, they could totally F you by accident. Like, that's the problem, right? Like, you can't you can't just simply rely on the platform always to do it, right? I'm not saying it's the client's fault. I'm just saying to have the platform be solely responsible for this is very, very difficult. You should be able to have stuff set up. Right, you should be able to have um, get viral on the platform's dime. Well, that's I mean that's the problem is that you should be able to have limits set up. The fact that you can't just say like, "Hey, you're not allowed to exceed this much spending," seems a little crazy, especially if you're on a free tier. Right, you're on the free tier, uh, which seems like you're obviously saying, "I don't want to spend any money." Yeah, Thor's chat has done this on accident. Yeah, exactly. Like literally, Thor's site has to, Thor is a walking. DDoS. I mean, even when I played a game, I DDoSed a website once and took it down. It's not that I'm trying to. It's just like it, it, it doesn't take a lot to accidentally DDoS. Yeah, the, the hacker news hug of death. It happens all the time. So, but how would you fix this as a user? I mean, that's probably people put Cloudflare fronts in front of things. They have ways to drop queues of old requests. You can get like a, you can, you know, you can find out the time in which the request was originally made. And if it's longer than like 15 seconds ago, 20 seconds ago, 30 seconds ago, you can, uh, you can also take it down. It shouldn't take a tweet, post, social media. I agree with this wholeheartedly, by the way. It sucks that this response had to come after you had a very popular Hacker News post. Because for every one very popular Hacker News post, you know for a fact that there's a hundred people that got hit with like maybe a $500 fine, maybe a $1,000 fine, maybe something smaller where they felt powerless to do anything and it didn't really make a big splash like this. You know, because not everybody's going to get hit with a $104,000 bill in 
in four days, right? Most people are getting very little. Yeah, they support the the support should have escalated the bill without asking the free tier customer if they wanted to. <laughs> yes, you can tell a lot about a person. That's the problem with the platform is obfuscating by default control for the user. So the user has no straightforward way of manipulating this. Exactly. So here's my question to you because I hear a lot of people saying they should have limits on this. What should what should be the outcome if you hit a limit for a website? Don't serve new requests. I mean, see, do, do you see do you see how hard this do you see how hard this problem is? Can we at least can we at least agree that this is difficult? Like that's uh, shut them down and make them pay. I mean, it's not trivial. That's all I'm trying to say is that I'm just trying to say like when people say just put a rate limit in, you have to ask yourself what is the what is the what is the outcome of it? Like how how do you do this? I mean, I personally think you just hit them all with the 418, right? Just return a 429, nah, 418 them. Uh, that is a difficult question. I'd rather just learn how to make my own server, and not to deal with it. Yeah, I mean the pro. Yeah, again, but again, let's just okay. Let's let's go with. I see a lot of people talk about like hit them with an email alert at fifty percent. I actually think this is pretty nice. Uh, Ken Burns, at least pre-hit them, letting them know that they're getting close. Maybe at a 25, 50, 75, 90, 95, right? Start doing that. Like I think those are all pretty good ideas to at least warn them. But obviously, in this case, you would have you would have got the twenty five, the fifty, the the seventy five, the ninety, the ninety five emails all within five minutes. In this case, yeah, you could uh, you could have a hard limit on free tiers, just hard limit saying I will I want to always be free, all right? Calls. I mean, again, that means uh, again, like you gotta remember that this is a free tier. So last time I heard this was years ago. So I don't quote me on this as the exact thing. This was like six years ago five years ago or whatever it was, a call to uh, customer support at Netflix cost Netflix like $5 or some something like that. It cost multiple dollars for a call to happen. So you got to remember that when you get hit with a call, if it's with a person, it costs real money, right? It costs real money to do something like that. If it's with just some automated voice message, well, you better hope that your calls don't get hit with spam marking and all that kind of stuff. You know, do you think buzzwords are stopping people researching? I don't, I don't know. What, hold on, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Free tier sends customers a hundred thousand dollar bill. Yes, but a phone call is too expensive. I think this. I mean, there's some. I'm just. We're just discussing like thoughts on how to do things. We get that there's this one case that's extreme, but there's also for every one case that there's extreme, there's like nine thousand cases that aren't extreme. That what do you do with it? Okay, what do you do with the free tier that's getting a hundred dollar bill? Right. I'm just throwing it out there. We're not talking. Obviously, the hundred thousand dollar one is the big one, but everyone's saying let's put limits in. So what do you do with the limits? Right, I'm not talking about the hundred thousand dollar one. That one obviously is a little bit different. Uh, so that is, yeah. Someone has to take that. Let's see. This is all wrong. Just give a choice. I think they should give a, a choice. It's free tier. It is a free tier. <laughs> it is a free tier. But you're still using the service, and at some point, your free tier exceeds the limits. It. You got to remember that free tier is operationally within a bandwidth. Does that make sense? It's within a bandwidth. It's not. Th this is not a machine. Okay, you're not. Getting an, uh, a free t a free Linode tier, $5 a month or whatever. You're getting something different. Limits on by default. Yeah, I mean, so I wouldn't put limits on by default, but I would, pr I would probably have it so that it's a very obvious thing. I wouldn't put it on by default because you could accidentally ruin somebody by accident. Cloudflare is unlimited. Yeah. Anyways, these are all interesting things. I just think it's, I think it's difficult. Uh, then it's, pr then it's there pro probably, I mean. It should be there. Like minimally, I'm totally on your. I, I'm totally on everybody's team that you should have limits. Whether you have soft limits, hard limits, how you can limit it, all that kind of stuff. I think that makes sense, right? I think that that makes sense. But anything beyond that, it. it I mean, it's it's a hard problem. You're saying for them to start serving captchas, like I mean, that's like a whole nother. You know, there's a lot to even just serving captchas. You know, it, it, there's a lot to that. It's not for freezy. That's the whole point. Let's see. Am I insane, or was that the whole point of serverless? Uh, is that it's supposed to scale? Uh, yes, that's the whole point. Is it scales to demand? That's the danger, though. That's the whole point of serverless. Is that serverless is a two-edged sword. The one edge, it's very fantastic, and you can scale up automatically. Versus uh, the other edge is that you get DDoSed and you get hit with the sword. Right? It's a free tier. If it's going to exceed the limit, I see. I don't know if these things have really. 
free tier is an interesting word when it comes to a lot of these uh when it comes to a lot of these auto scaling free term free tier can often mean you're within a scale band you can exceed the scale band yeah i think hard limits and soft limits are probably the way to go i think a hard limit makes the most sense like as a free tier you can just simply say hey no right why do they even charge so much for egress at scale? Uh, it, it's it's expensive. Things are expensive. It costs them a lot of money. Right? I think if, yeah, I, I mean, I would prefer just to have a hard turnoff. It's their business model. They literally make money by uh, by sending stuff. I mean, their entire business model is to send things and to make money off of it. Thank you for this lovely thing. Oh, I'm going to turn that off. All right. Hey, the name. So this is kind of interesting. Serverless, uh, serverless horrors. Oh, what is serverless horrors? Is this just a list of all the things that have gone wrong? Yeah, I mean, server. I mean, again, serverless can accidentally. I mean, serverless can accidentally cost a lot of money. Okay, you just got to remember that. If you don't, it can really cost a lot of money. But I mean, obviously, there's a lot of advantages too. Like, imagine if you had to pay three. Imagine if you had to pay fifty thousand dollars a year for your serverless, but you also don't have to pay an engineer to do it, right? I mean, that's the whole. That's the that's the entire trade off you're making, right? That's the entire accidentally, but by design. Exactly, it's accidentally, but by design. If you think serverless costs a lot of money, you should try getting divorced. Ah, becoming maidenless. So what you're trying to say is, what you're trying to say is that as far as uh, maidenless, maidenless is more than serverless as far as cost. Is what you're trying to say? I can see that. I can see that being really expensive. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's that's a strong vibes. Yeah, they take fifty percent. It's fifty percent of that. A oh, Jen.